With the history going back almost 1,700 years to the settlement of the Muscogee tribe, Macon, Georgia is the jewel at the heart of the state. Sites such as Fort Hawkins, founded in 1806, and the Hay House, declared a National Historic Landmark in 1974, the city is an eclectic blend of old and new. With the downtown area going through a renaissance, many historic sites are attracting new attention. One such site is the historic Rose Hill Cemetery. Founded in 1840, Rose Hill Cemetery, located on the banks of the Omogee River, is the final resting place for dignitaries ranging from Confederate General Edward Dorr Tracy to the founding members of the Allman Brothers Band. Rose Hill Cemetery is one of the few cemeteries on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, this is Joey Fernandez. He is a friend of mine from way back. And um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing and who you, you know, what your organization's called and stuff. Um, preserving our Georgia Cemeteries, LLC, uh, started out, I don't know, uh, 2015, uh, went to a cemetery, Stokes Family, or Stokes Cemetery off of Hartley Ridge Road, and um, um, I was told I wouldn't be able to find it. It took me about three days to look for it, and when I got there, I was like, wow. Um, it, uh, it was so overrun, ran with weeds and trees and people... Uh, digging up the graves to find the uh, swords, I guess, or buttons, and um, asked my archaeology friend. He went out there with me, and I was like, man, who can we get to come out here? And he's like, nobody. And I just, it, I thought about it for a month or two, and then I started researching of how I could learn how to do it if nobody could do it, and um, started taking classes in Savannah, and um, I did that. I mean, I've been to several classes, workshops uh, through Savannah Tech and um, did some work under Jonathan Appel and I just fell in love with it. And then now I've been to a lot of cemeteries I've worked in Monroe County, uh, Walton County for the city, repairing their headstones. And um, now I'm pretty much full time over here at Rose Hill repairing things. And it's just a lot of fun. I mean, it, as you can see, there's nobody out here, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty peaceful, um, and I just, I love it. I mean, I wish I had learned how to do this when I was 20, um, Yeah. so I've got a lot of catching up to do, a lot. <laughs> yeah, that uh, I know you used to be into the um, collecting arrowheads and things like that. You've, you've discovered a lot of history uh, around making, haven't you? Oh yeah, I've been around in the woods a lot. That's one thing I'm thankful for. The lifestyle it allows me to break away and go explore and find things and do things that other people, other things uh, that people can't do. And I enjoy my life. It's uh, stressful sometimes, but um, other times it's just great. Yeah. So um. What's some of the strangest things you found while you were working there at Rose Hill? I know you found some pretty interesting stuff. Um, a wagon, two wagon wheels and a bronze hub that goes to the wagon wheel. That was, that was pretty fascinating to find that in the uh, natural spring Creek that, um, it was buried in the mud. I just saw one little piece of a curved piece of wood and I was like, well, what is that? So I started digging and it was just one big, huge wagon wheel and then right in the middle of it was a uh, I mean the it was preserved since it was submerged in water and never had a chance to you know oxygen get to it and rot it out so it's it's uh that was probably one of the neatest things um finding out here right for sure <laughs> the um um as far as the history there um what kind of different stuff are you, how, how far back are some of the graves you've been working on? Um, probably just 1840s. Um, all of them, all of them that I've uh, worked on are in the mid 1800s to the late 1800s. And it's mainly the marble that I like dealing with or use working with is because um, I'm trying to be the best at um, infilling uh, with hydraulic lime mortar and the natural stone mixing that up and filling in the breaks and making it look 
almost um, to the naked eye that you won't be able to see um, exactly where it was broken or damaged or vandalized. So that's, I take a lot of pride in that, uh, just getting it perfect. Um, but things with, if you're working with historic stone, you don't want it to be permanent because it, permanent just means that it's going to break somewhere else. Um, so if you do work out in the cemetery, I guess you basically, you don't want it to last forever. You just, if it fails in 30 years, then someone else will come back behind me after I'm gone and repair it again. So you want it, you want to be able to repair it again. It needs to be, um, repairable in the future and it will fail in the future um, just from using the same um, ingredients that they used in the 1800s um, like uh, just for instance uh, I'm just trying out a trial basis with the uh, these uh, mid-1800 bricks with lime water and I'm trying to match up trying to figure out what kind of sand they used back then and I'm almost guessing that it's the old muggy river sand which is right down the hill. Um, I could send off some of the mortar to the National Center of Preservation Technology and training and get them to test it and you know scan it or whatever they do and um, they can tell me exactly what kind of sand it is but that costs money um, so I'm just trying to play around with it like I, I can take those bricks out that's not you don't want to use Portland cement that's one big no-no in historic cemeteries because Portland cement is harder than the brick and so when you have expansion and contraction heat and cold weather the brick is going to fail um, because the Portland cement's not going to budge at all so you'll you'll have some issues with the brick so if you ever want to do um, repointing of uh, the mortar in a historic cemetery you want to make sure you use hydraulic lime. <laughs> so you you really it's more of preservation than anything isn't it just trying to keep it from getting any worse and maybe make it look as nice as possible as it is right and save every little piece i mean every every little thing one day somebody else is going to come back through and then when they're digging they'll say oh wow here's the bricks or here's pieces to it or the mortar from the original um, work um, i've seen i've been behind a couple people that probably repaired it things in the 20s and I can see exactly um, what happened or figure out why it was broken or how they repaired it and why it failed. I mean there's it's just every stone is different there's every single grave is different I mean there's this that's one of the neatest things I know that I can work here the rest of my life and I will never encounter the same thing there's always something new here always right um, talking about working there and all that, um, when it comes to the city, what kind of, do they give you any support? I know you get some community support, don't you? Yeah, I get a lot of community support. We have a lot of volunteers that, um, I'll give some classes out here on, uh, the proper ways that do no harm, cleaning techniques. Um, and you know, 20, 25, 30 people will show, well, I don't know about 30, but, uh, a lot of people will show up and they're willing to learn and clean and, We'll um, knock out, we did um, 600 headstones um, in Soldier Square not too long ago. That was, that was a good little task to do. And that's just basically, you have biological growth on, on marble. It's back to eating the stone. I mean, it's deteriorating the stone faster than anything else. And so we want to get rid of that. Um, a lot of people say, well, I like going to the cemetery and it looks, you know, it looks um, old with the biological growth on it, but that's not good because a lot of the records here have been lost over the years. So the only thing, the only information that you have is off of the epitaph and the inscription of the person. So like on this, for instance, barely see the, you can't, you really can't read it. So I would clean this because if not, it, you could just feel how it's just the silica in the stone has disappeared. It's just one day you won't be able to read this if you don't clean it. So, and I'm sure the family back then didn't intend for their monuments to look like this either. So I like cleaning 
um, the ones that you definitely can't read. And we have classes here at Rose Hill. Haven't posted any lately because of the COVID virus, but um, soon we'll we'll get back and have volunteers out here um, cleaning the stones. Okay. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Um, yeah, uh, this is for a uh, public history course, at, uh, online course at Liberty University. So, uh, Awesome. Great. Yeah, there's focusing on that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, it's a really neat thing to focus on. Yeah. It really matters. It really matters. If we want to pass this stuff along to future generations, we need yeah. to step up the game and start taking care of this stuff. Oh, yeah. I know they take, you know, pretty good care of the, the uh, soldiers square down there. Yeah. Um, Cause the, I know the U UDC and the SCV come in there every year and stuff, but um, yeah. isn't there, there's a, there is a Jewish section, isn't there? Yeah. There's uh, uh, two, two, three actually. Um, right. Here. Yeah. So they're on different parts of the cemetery. Um, yeah. They're not together. Yeah. I know. Uh, Everybody knows about the Almond Bros there <laughs> section oh, down there. Yeah. So. It's funny when somebody they'll drive up and they're like, Can you tell me where the Almond Brothers are? And I'm like, Oh yeah, I think they moved them back over there to uh the Big House Museum. But they're like it's just kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh. I always do that to certain ones when I know that they're like already spaced out. I'm like, Oh yeah, they they moved them last week. You know, so <laughs> Do you say you're going to be doing uh, stuff for the University of Georgia next week? Probably. Um, I've got a. I'm on their vendor list list, and I'll be working um, at Zion Hill Cemetery. It's an African American cemetery, and um, so they'll be. I mean, they're they'll be the ones paying me. I'm sure, but um, that's going to. Uh, there's a. I don't know. Twenty something monuments. Um, one of my friends, uh, new friends, found located at the cemetery and started cleaning it up. So um, I, I was asked to come up there and help out. So I'm going to do that. I'm looking forward to that because it's, I mean, it's neat. It's a neat little cemetery. Cool. Cool. Well, I won't keep you any longer. I appreciate it though. I sure do. 